welcome to the Life's Best Medicine podcast, where we are finding hope and healing one episode at a time. No appointment needed, no rubber gloves, and no coping. Just a healthy dose of life lessons to help equip you for this wild journey we call life. Oh boy, it's November. Guess what? Christmas is coming up, the holidays. Oh boy, this is the tough month, right? So, you know, some of us might have gotten knocked off track a little bit on Halloween, but let's be as good as we can this month. You know, try to enjoy yourself. Enjoy some Simply Snacking. They're hosting this podcast. So, you know, try out the beef and chicken flavors. It's a great option for you to have if you're traveling to see family. It'll keep you sane in the airport and you won't have to eat the airport food. So, do what I do, have some Simply Snacking, beef and chicken, tons of flavors. Go to their website, check them out. And thank you for listening. Hey, everyone. This is a friendly reminder that we are here for entertainment purposes only. We may not even be that entertaining at times, but this is not medical advice. You know, talk to your doctor, check with your healthcare professionals uh, before making any lifestyle changes or, you know, medicine changes. What we're talking about is our clinical experience and what we've seen. And so if you really want our advice, you can consult us. You can actually consult me as a doctor, or you can consult my guest and, uh, and get all your questions answered, but we can't give free medical advice because we can't pay our bills with that, but we can help to educate you a bit and allow you to think a little bit and always reach out to your medical professional before making any lifestyle changes. Thank you. Hello, and welcome back to the Low Carb MD and Life's Best Medicine podcast. You're stuck with me, throws out doing fun stuff probably with his family. And I think there's a really, really awesome guest and a really important uh, topic especially for me, because I'm a guy still, I guess, but uh, it's the men's health series, right? Health Matters series. Chasey McBeath, welcome. All the way from across the pond on the other side of the ocean where the unwinds and all the smart people are. Thank you for, for joining us. Thank you so, so much. Well, I'm here with the Fekis. The Fekis are down here in, in Down Under. Um, but you have many, many, many listeners um, from Australia. So thank you so much for having me on. I'm, I'm thrilled. I can't wait to chat to you. Oh, it's so great to have you, you know, and I'm excited about what you're doing. I said, you're talking about men's health stuff. That's kind of cool. Like that's a, a different topic. That a lot of people don't really uh, touch base on, but you've done topics uh, with women's health and with all kinds of stuff over time, right? I have, I have. So, um, you know, the low carb lifestyle hub, is something I created a couple of years ago. It's my second business, if you like, but it's my big picture business. So, you know, really, I'm just so passionate about giving people more options and getting the messages of that, you know, out there of health that we don't generally get from mainstream, right? So we don't generally go to the doctor and get the the option of, well, you could change your diet. Um, have you considered that? So, this was why I created the hub and to to really help with that. I decided, yeah, it was 2020. So it was before we went into the first lockdown, but um, it happened during lockdown that I ran the first women's health one. And I primarily did that because, you know, I felt there was a real need for women's health specifically to be talked about from the perspective of women. And it was hugely successful. Um, and I've since done three of those. And, and then it sort of occurred to me, well, you know, again, men need a platform. It's so good for men to have the opportunity to talk about men's health for men. Uh, and so I decided to put that on. I have four boys, I have five children, one girl, but four boys. And uh, I'm very passionate about, you know, men, again, getting the right, getting access to the right information or all the information they need to make their own choices when it comes to optimizing their own health. And how did you start on this journey? How did you start like, you know, getting into health and nutrition where, where you always fit and, you know, what, what's your background that drew, drew you into this? So, yeah, I was, well, I was always thought I was um, healthy and fit. So I was a personal trainer for about 12 years. But when I turned 40, which is nearly 10 years ago now, I, uh, you know, I was overweight. I'd had my fourth child. I couldn't lose the weight. I'd put on about 25 kilos and, you know, I was trying to do what I was 
told to do and what I thought was right, which is, you know, eat less and move more. And, you know, I was training people and I was thinking, gee, this is pretty bad. You know, I'm a, a pretty fat personal trainer. What's going on? Something can't be right. And I just happened to be really lucky to find one of the early low carb GPs in Melbourne who diagnosed me with fatty liver and as pre-diabetic. And I was like, what the... No, I guess looking back, I'm not surprised. It's definitely my family, heart disease, diabetes, um, addiction. I've got it all in my family. So I, I wasn't surprised um, when I, I thought about it, but I thought, well, something's going, you know, there's something I'm missing. You know, why is this going on? I've got to learn more. And I was lucky to come across Prof Noakes um, and Dr. Eric Westman and all the pioneers Um you know, that just totally, totally reversed everything for me in terms of what I believed. And that has never stopped. I haven't stopped learning. I haven't stopped being curious. Um, Obviously put all that in remission uh, and then decided after a couple of years, I had to get into health coaching that I'd be able to really help people much more with this information as a health coach. And so, yeah, about seven years ago, I started my own health coaching business and that's grown to, you know, now I do groups and I mentor other coaches and work with Nutrition Network, which is fantastic. And, you know, then have on the side this big picture information platform, you know, and I think at the end of the day, if all it is, is something for my family or my kids to be able to go to, to get the information they need, then it's worth all the effort to, you know, putting it all together and, and having it up there. So, the second part for me was 45. When I turned 45, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's. Again, my mum has had that and it's been reversed for her um, since she started, uh, you know, getting into low carb. I, my mum's been a big win for me. Um, but yeah, I put all that into remission. I went carnivore for about six months and it was really the impetus for me to do the health journey beyond diet. Uh, so, you know, really looking in here and looking at all the reactive stuff that I had going on that I wasn't aware about and just sort of growing, I suppose, from and healing from the trauma that we all carry with us from, you know, a very young age, usually in a divorce and, you know, all the stuff that happens in life that um, I'd kind of just squashed and put over there. And it was time to really look at it and just heal from that. And it's been the best thing I've ever done. And that's really, incorpor- you know, incorporate that into my work now. I'm a big picture, holistic. It's never just one thing. We look at everything because that's just the most amazing journey ever. Yeah, and I think it's so awesome what you're doing with men. First of all, I'm going to tell you, my female listeners, please don't look at her. Don't look at the video here. Don't look at her picture. She's 52 or so. Mm, nearly 50. Uh, they're not gonna- nearly 50. Oh, nearly 50. Okay, good. When you said 12, I was trying to do the math in my head. So, you know, that's why I'm a doctor, not a math major, but nearly 50 and five kids, like they're not going to like you, you know, right? Oh, but I'm really nice. nice I I think, I think they'll overwhelm (laughs) with that, that you look so young. It's ridiculous, but we'll try not to be jealous of you because you're doing great work. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I looked older at 35 than I do now, but isn't that funny? The diet and uh, healing and and learning how to live a, a pretty, magical life just from being grateful and accepting of what you've got and I think that's that's the elixir of um I don't know yeah counting (laughs) counting your blessings and enjoying life and having fun and you know helping people along the way I I find that as a common denominator of a lot of people in the community who are out helping people they're they're solid in their views and they don't really need to, to have everyone love them or agree with them. They kind of, you know, have this foundation, like the Fed keys, you know, we're, we're able to step on what they went through and, you know, Noakes and, you know, all these people that, my goodness, you know, and, and, you know, honestly, I've spoke at a lot of conferences, but I haven't seen a lineup like this. I was like, now when I was looking, I was like, wow, this is intimidating, you know, but the other thing it's, it's really important, like you're saying, you know, the emotional traumas, life stuff that we've been through that men are not very good at tapping into that and reflecting on it and reaching out and, and uh, you know, connecting with other men sometimes. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think that is, it is something that we have to have the courage to confront, you know, this condition, conditioned cultural belief that, you know, we have to just get up and get on with it. I mean, we can do that, but we also need to acknowledge what's going on. And that just takes a bit of courage and know that you know there's no there's nothing wrong with asking for help in fact it's a strength if you do that because it's going to change your life and turn the trajectory of your life around uh it's 
you know, it is all about this courage um, to stand true to who you are. And it's interesting what you say, you, you know, being confident with, with your message. I, I, you know, that's a lot of the work I do with my clients because so often, you know, they want to change their lifestyle, but they may not have the support of their family or their, their friends. I mean, we've all got that. And I think that's just the reality of it, but you know, that's okay. I think it's saying, well, you don't really need anybody to do what you're doing. It takes courage to can, you know, go against that. But if you really stay true to you, but just keep the space open, you know, you don't push what you do on anyone. I don't push anything on anyone. I never tell anyone what to do. My job is just to put all the cards on the table and just show the options and then help them just to decide what's going to work for them. Um, but yeah, if you're confident with that, you know, you allow people to come to things at their own time and you can't force anyone to see something they're not ready to see. But that connection, you know, that's what I'm so passionate about. And I think that's why I've been able to create such incredible connections because I allow people to be who they are. I'm curious about what they see. I don't expect people to see it the way I do. And I certainly don't get offended if someone sees it differently to me. I'm curious as to why that is. You know, it's like we all have this little window, right, that we see the world through based on our own experiences and thoughts and beliefs and cultural expectations we've taken on. So I look through mine, but I'm really curious as to what yours looks like. So I want to come around and see it from your perspective. And if we can do that, people, their defenses drop and really their hearts open and you can connect with anyone. You really can. And I think that's the... The beauty of understanding when you heal yourself, um, you know, when we heal ourselves, we do heal the world. You know, we so often want to go out there and try and change everything out there, but it starts within here. And then that impact just flows onto every single person you have contact with, you know, whether it's the guy you buy your coffee from and you're going to smile at them and really ask them about how their day is and be interested um, instead of, you know, head down, rushing around, just everyone's in my way. It's like, well, life's pretty crap when you're kind of living from that. Mm -hmm. But if you have a look up and you're curious and you're interested and it's pretty magical, it's pretty magical. Yeah. It's amazing. We can always find common ground. Yeah. I have friends of all beliefs and all different ideas and diets and different exercise. And, you know, I think once you connect with people on a human level, then they, they know you're a decent person and you can accomplish things. You don't have to agree on everything. It's okay. You know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, I do think that's, that's actually a gift because maybe there's something in what they see that can help you too, you know, like the minute, you know, human beings are so, um, you know, we want to know everything. We want to think we know because that is the illusion of comfort, but it is an illusion. And when we can see that actually, you know what, we're just lifelong learners and yeah, you might look like you got it all together and I might look like I've got it all together, but I so don't. I'm just doing the best I can. I'm a human being too. I make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. So, you know, just putting it in that human perspective is just, yeah, I know it's pretty cool. And you just give things a go. And if they work, they work. If they, work, if they don't, well, they don't, but you've learned something and, you know, it can't take away your innate well-being. It's just life. So what possessed you to get all these guys together to give talks? <laughs> it's hard. It's hard, huh? Tracking us down and doctors no. and, and experts around. Everyone's busy and it's hard to, to pin them down. Yeah, I feel like the shepherd, you know, trying to, to, to corral sometimes. But, you know, that's all part of it. I, you know, I totally understand that. People are busy. I get it. Um, and, you know, I'm not, I think I might have said this to you as well when we recorded our chat. I'm not pushy. That's not my innate, you know, I'm not like that. And I, I've been definitely conditioned to fear rejection from a lot of that. So I, I tend to kind of sit back a little bit. So I've had to step over a lot of those just to say, look, you know, just in case you've forgotten, just popping in here just to remind you. But so, you know, if you don't want to, you don't want to, that's absolutely fine. Um, but, you know, as I said, I think it's it's just the fact that getting a group of guys together who have so much to share. Um, and, you know, I, I've wanted this to be from the heart. I've wanted people to be able to come and just really share, well, what have been the light bulb moments for you? How has your view of health changed? But why does health matter? You know, we, we don't really stop and think sometimes, you know, I think everyone innately values health. How could you not? But we get so traumatized by being told the wrong information that doesn't work for us. We, we think, oh, it's all too hard and I can't do it. It's not for me. I'm just going to, 
not even think about it until, you know, we get a diagnosis or we have a heart attack or something happens and we're like, okay, maybe I better take notice of it because to me, health is is everything because it underpins everything we want in life. I can't do the things I want to do in life if I don't have health. And I can't do things that, um, you know, to the extent. So I'm not just interested in just living. I want to thrive and I want to have all the people around me thrive as well. And if we don't have good metabolic health and good energy systems and have access to all that incredible energy in our body, with, with we're overcome by the, the difficulties of it and the thoughts that come up. Um, that make it everything look so hard and you know it just looks too easy to sit on the couch and just watch binge watch Netflix and supposed to going out there and being in the community and doing things with your family and other people that actually do take us towards the life we want. Yeah, I think that's where people get joy, you know, in interacting with other people. And we went through, I, I know you had it harder than we did, I think, in Australia with the lockdowns and you know, Melbourne, not be able to yeah. Yeah, it's really, I mean, I was surprised. I don't know how, if it was what we were seeing over here in the States. I was like, wow, that's a really, you know, when you take away community, you take away the ability to go work out with people or just smile or laugh or, you know, hug someone. It's really, it was really a hard time for a lot of people. And, and I have a lot of patients. I just met someone today that, you know, she gained 40 pounds during that time, just being stressed and locked down, you know, wasn't able to go into the office. So she had to be at home all the time. It's pretty devastating. Yeah. It was devastating. I mean, we had lockdowns in Melbourne. Melbourne was the worst in the world in terms of the lockdowns. I mean, certainly in Australia, Sydney had a little about six months, but we had it on and off for two years. Um, and it it was traumatizing. And it's going to take a long time for people to to really, you know, overcome the trauma. What kind of happened is most people went in. And for me, I have to be honest, and, you know, it was a massive time of growth and I wrote a book. I, I did a lot of really great things in that time because I saw that I couldn't control, you know, the decisions of the government. I could can only control my reaction to it. So, you know, my husband lost his 30-year martial arts business and he was home for a year and tried another business. That Then we went into another lockdown. That didn't work again. And, um, you know, there was everyone was confronted with challenges. And I, I think, you know, what, what's got us through is that we have such a deep connection to our belief in, in who we are and what we do and ourselves that we knew we would get through it and we work it out. And I mean, I loved having him home. He got to look up, do the homeschooling. I kept working. Um, we also decided we would train outside in the backyard as often as we could. So, you know, we came out actually mind and body fitter than, a lot of other people. And that was really all that came down to is everyone did the best they could with the awareness and the knowledge that they had. But, you know, now it's, it's, I see people, I walk around or I go for a run and there's still so many eyes down cast, you know, and I just say hi and look at people and smile. And if that's all you can do to others, that does shift people a little bit out of their, you know, their world of, of thinking. Um, so I have hope. I, 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 I love human beings. I have huge hope in in the potential for us to heal and we've got many many challenges that are going to come our way but i believe just a thousand percent in the ability of humans to to get insight and to have wisdom and to connect with their with their strengths within and yeah yeah you know i, I to... think these are things that you know just today you know i was thinking man this is a great compliment but one of my patients She's doing great. It took her a while. She was struggling a bit. And, and you know, she's always like, okay, next week, we're going to get this. We're going to be more strict. We're going to figure this out. But she's been doing fantastic. And she's so proud of herself. And she said, Doc, thank you for believing in me and not giving up on me, even when I gave up on myself. And she said, I gave up on myself. I was done. And then just you being kind and nice. So you start realizing we need each other. Like you walking by someone. And I noticed that so many times you walk by and just smile or, or wave to someone, you know, right? Or, acknowledge that they're there and then they brighten up and they'll smile they may look grumpy but then they brighten up and will say hi back to you or they're surprised that you're saying hello to them or something you know yeah totally i i think it you know knowing that it's it's hurt people that hurt people you know people don't mean to do you know horrible things to to other people but that you know you have to understand that we project out into the world, what we live in inside. So if we've got hurt and pain that we've not acknowledged or dealt with, you know, that tends to get spewed out onto the world. So, and that often, or we retract, 
So that looks like, well, I'm not going to acknowledge anybody because then I won't get rejected. I won't feel more pain. You know, a lot of that's not conscious thought, but that's kind of how we we deal with it and build into it. But it just takes one person like yourself, um, you know, to believe in someone to then show them actually, you know what, maybe I can do this and and maybe I'm not as broken as I think I am. I don't think anyone's broken. I just think we need insight and awareness and reconnection. Um, and the best job in the world, hey, being able to give that gift back to somebody else, that's it's pretty cool. Yeah, and, and just to learn from each other. So in that note, well, first of all, what book did you, what was the name of your book? Well, my book's called You Have Today, 100 Insights That Could Change Your Life. So can I tell you how I came to that? Because I never yeah, absolutely. planned to write yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> so it must have been uh, June or July I don't know, the years are just sort of melded a little bit with uh, the last couple of years. I think it was 2021. It must have been last year. And we went, we're about to go into our sixth or seventh lockdown, which was only supposed to be two weeks, but we knew it would be six months. And um, I, I really sort of felt the, the anguish of what everyone was going through. And again, myself as well, you know, oh, homeschooling for oh, four kids because my first had finished school in 2020. But here we're we all go five again. kids. You were all locked down together five yep. yeah yep. so yeah and for 2020 husband. we were my son was doing vce which is final year um and so then he finished and and he took off he was going to go to europe but couldn't go to europe but he took off around australia and he hasn't come home my, my boy but he's having a great time and living a great life so i'm very proud of him um but yeah, so we were going into this lockdown again. I thought, you know what? I've got a bit of an Instagram following and I've um, been doing it for about seven years. And I thought, I'm just going to show up each day on Instagram and just share some insight, just share something I see about the, the true potential that we have as a human being. So I did that. I was going to do it for a year, but I got to day 100 and I looked at it and I'm like, there's a book there's a book there. So I took it all off. <laughs> I said, Hey, I'm going to put this together as a book. And I did. And, and if I'd have sat down, I thought, okay, I've got to write a book. I probably would have been all up in my head and I wouldn't have been able to do it, but doing it that way, it was so authentic from the heart. I didn't plan any of it. I just allowed myself each day to sit in a space of just seeing what came up. And I shared that. And that's what it is. It's my, it's my heart on a platter. It's my healing journey. It's what I show my clients where to look in terms of really seeing something about healing because health, I mean, health to me is not obviously just about what we eat. Yes, a lot of what I focus on is that because it is a very important foundation puzzle piece. But, you know, it is all these other things. It is our reactions and our emotions and how we can deal with things. And But again, you know, so many are just so disconnected with, what's possible and what is innate you know within us because this you know this helpful amazing tribal brain constantly finds threats and you know looks for the negatives and we have to really see well, that's just what the brain does that's his job but you know that's one option most people live in their head and just follow what their, their brain says as opposed to saying okay well there's one option but I'm just going to wait a moment and see whether there might be some other options available to me. And the way we work is this, there's always something else going to come through. And, you know, then aligning what we do in life with not our thinking, not what other people want us to do, not with what our mom wants us to do or our partner, but with us, with our heart, with our values, with what matters to us. If we can do that, um, you know, as I said, life just, we, we feel much more connected. We have a compass. We don't feel like we're drifting and being pushed and swayed and pulled along by, you know, what everyone else wants of us. It just reconnects us to that compass, you know, to guide us. Yeah. I think that's so important. And also, you know, just thinking what your husband went through during this time, you know, the stress, you build something and you, you, you invest and you put your blood in tears and you have so many memories and then it's out of your control. There's nothing you can do. And and it's, you know, 30 years of hard work. It's like, man, that is, you know, I, I walked away from a practice after 18 years and that was hard to do. Well, it wasn't that hard in retrospect. It was the best thing I ever did. But, uh, you know, you just go financial freedom, you know, there's certain benefits, but 
when the pain outweighs the benefit, you start saying, okay, I gotta, I gotta look elsewhere. But, you know, emotionally for him being disconnected from other guys and not being able to go out and, you know, do whatever sports he wants to do, that is really traumatic for people. Yeah, it is. But you know, this, the spiritual uh, strength in the martial arts is, is pretty amazing. I mean, he, uh, we've been together. So he was my second husband. So I've had five kids, not because I wanted five kids, but I was married um, quite young. I had three kids with my first husband. And then I actually made the decision to walk away from the marriage. I had kids that were two, four and six, you know, most people would think, what the are you crazy woman? He's actually a doctor. Like he's a really, um, you know, very great provider, but I knew that I, I you know, I'd, I'd wanted more and I made that choice to walk away. And yeah, no uh, one wants to be then... a, married to a doctor. I have my poor wife. My goodness, <laughs> I don't know how she's survived all these years, you know? Oh dear. I, I think they're incredible, but anyway, <laughs> I, uh, I, then I, I met, you know, someone totally different to mm-hmm. my first husband, who's my now love of my life and my partner, I adore him. We've been together 13 years have two little boys of our own and um he's taught me so much about this I mean he saw in me so much that I had no idea about so the way he manages life is is incredible and inspiring and yeah that happened to him but you know what he he's he's not afraid of adversity he's not afraid of doing the hard things he's not afraid of 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 confronting challenges and I think that that's actually something that so many of us are and and we look to then, you know, push it away or run away from it through these easy to access addictive foods, drink, drugs, and different things like that. And I think if we can see that, you know, life is about challenges. Life isn't meant to be easy. I'm not sure where we got that idea that it's supposed to be easy. It never is. But when we accept that and then say, well, you know what? I will deal with anything that I actually have the courage to confront. Um, So he actually had the most incredible time being home looking after the kids. You know, it was something that he'd never had the opportunity to do before. Uh, So he stepped up into that role. He ended up having spinal surgery as well during that time, you know, years of fighting. And I mean, he won the Australian martial arts championship for, you know, many years. He's, obviously got a bit of damage there over the years so he he had time out to get that done as well and um but now he's you know he's he's working a job now actually in traffic management because he he will do whatever he needs to do to provide for the family but next year he's going to do Mark Sisson's uh, primal health coaching course and and build in some life coaching I tried to get him into the men's summit but he goes I'm not ready babe next year I'll do it for you because he's just got so much to offer men um and yeah so that was that was my husband um I'm forgot what the question was sorry but <laughs> no that's it just going through that and him going through all that and how do you how do you have the resilience to keep going on you know mm. and I think having that loving family support knowing what matters you kind of start looking at really you start reassessing what really matters and I, you know for me I had to go through that also you know mm. saying okay I can't work 18 hour days every day I got to go home sometimes I want to be home see my neighbors go hang out sometimes and do things at home. And, you know, you realize a lot of us are, are slaves to our profession or our job or our calling. And, and I see a lot of people who are miserable uh, that just, you know, they're just a hostage to their situation, you know? And, and as a matter of fact, a good friend of mine is a multimillionaire. He doesn't have to work and he works and he loves the challenge. He loves. And I said, you know, one day I said, why do you keep doing it? You don't need to work. And I mean, he goes, but I love the, the, the problem solving. I love certain things that he loves what he does. And I said, if you lost all your money, what would you do? And he says, I'd just make it back again, right? Like he, he, he no big deal. You lose it all and you've yeah. done He goes, I've done this. I, he went through a divorce and lost a lot of money too. And he goes, you know, you just kind of make it back again or you do whatever. And so the same thing as a lot of us believe if we get knocked off track, we're never going to recover instead of saying, okay, it's a bump in the road these three years, you know, d- d- despite of how bad it was, there was a lot of good that comes out of it. And, and, and in your book, it sounds like, and your growing process, you know, maybe it made you slow down in order to focus on what you need to fix. Yeah. I, that's slowing down. It, you know, it's so important to do that every now and again and ask yourself those questions. I'll tell you, uh, I'll give you a little bit of a, um, something that I, I recorded with Dr. Tony Hampton um, in our chat for the Men's Summit. So we were talking about, uh, he shared about a book. It's actually an Aussie book. I can't believe I'd never heard of it and I've got it now. But it's it's called The Top Five Regrets of the Dying. 
And it was this lady, she had, was in this job that she hated and, you know, just for a bank or something. And she decided she wanted to do something more with her life. And she, she went around and actually put herself in, you know, helping people in palliative care, went around to different houses and name's Bonnie Ware. So if you want to look it up, it's a brilliant book. And she interviewed, yeah, so (laughs) she, uh, she sat with people who were dying. And many, you know, and she looked after them. She she wiped their bottom. She actually cared for them, but she got to know them and connected with them. And and they they all shared with her the many regrets I think that they had, now that they knew that they couldn't get life back. And uh, she collated it all and put it into a book. And she saw there were five that came out of that, five big ones that all of them had. And one of them was, you know, really working in a job. I wish I hadn't worked so hard, but it, it wasn't working hard because there's nothing wrong with working hard but working in a job that we 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 don't love and that doesn't give us joy and doesn't you know fulfill but just constantly takes us away from our our family that was one of them and you know the other one the first one which is what I talk about all the time and we've touched on is that having the courage to I, I wish I'd lived a life that I wanted to live not a life that others wanted me to live very cool stuff. Yeah. And I think that's a, you know, that just focuses on, and on doctors. I was just reading 68% of doctors want to quit and do another job, like get out of it. And you think, wow, it's like they went in there to, they sacrificed so much and money and time and holidays with the family, all those things. And then they're looking saying, what am I doing? You know, now what I find is a lot of the doctors I say on your list are people who said, you know what, I'm going to get my priorities right. And I'm going to focus on what really matters. And those seem to be the happiest people on earth. And when I see these guys at conferences, you know, they're, they're just, a, there's a different mindset and, you know, they want to share everything they know and, and uh, you know, not hold things to themselves and not teach you and say, I learned this, you go figure it out yourself, that type of thing. Yes. I love that. And it's so true. It, it, it's amazing how many doctors in the space are just, that's what it's like. I mean, they haven't necessarily changed the way, you know, some of them haven't left their practice or, or done anything differently apart from they've just brought in this opportunity to actually heal people. You know, they've, they've been able to show people things like nutrition and, you know, lifestyle as being such a massive part of health. And instead of actually putting people on medication, 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 and then just having them come back and dosing them and all that stuff, which is, you know, over time, you know, the doctors I've spoken to, I've spoken to so many on my podcast as well over the years, it's like, you're just doing nothing, you know, you know, you feel like you're not really helping people. So that's the, you know, that disconnect that I think that we, we don't want to live with that very, for very long. We want to acknowledge that and look at that and think, okay, well, what can I do? And for many of these doctors, understanding low carb and nutrition and, you know, lifestyle has been life changing for the way they practice because now they're getting people off medications and what joy that's you know bringing into the way they practice and yeah absolutely and I I can attest to that for sure you know I enjoy what I do I really do I love it my patients are great you know so and they want to be healthy they want they're they're invested so when we're all invested in getting better then we could work as a team you know we could really build something a community too yeah but who doesn't want to get better this is the thing you know like it it's just people need to know this is, this is my deep drive, my driver, you know, as I said, I, I can't, I can't change anyone. I can't tell anyone what to think, but I, I'm so passionate about people just having access. You know, there's so many barriers for people having access to the right information to make, you know, their choices. And in the 10 years I've been in the space, it's grown huge. I mean, it's definitely, you know, this groundswell, uh, which is amazing. And, you know, like I've, I've got a great group in Melbourne, low carb Melbourne. I started up with a GP and a nutritionist and a couple of health coaches. I said, Hey, come on, let's in lockdown. I said, let's start up a bit of a support group online and it's grown pretty big. Now we have community events. And from that, the GP, um, Dr. Avi Charlton, she was in a, uh, just, you know, you know, like a standard 10 minute practice, you know, coughs, colds, dry, all this stuff. And she's like, I just don't, I want to get out, you know, I want to do something else. So she's created the low carb, uh, some Melbourne low carb clinic um, now, and everything's just changed for her. You know, we recently had an information night there where we all talked and shared, you know, what we'd seen about health and healing and 
she's just loving loving it when you know there was a moment there she was just like no nah, I think I just want to throw it all in and do something else but yeah, yeah. that's that's Money. when you start seeing like Dr. Unwin you know who I mentioned at the beginning mm -hmm. for some reason I thought you had moved to the UK for some reason but I'm I'm no. behind the times it's McKay they say it's a Scottish name but you know we we've been in Australia for a while <laughs> but you know dude, what a loss he was he was ready to be done his story is fantastic we just I had know. him on the pod if anyone hasn't listened go back and listen to the you know on low carb MD and life's best medicine um you know, he was done. He was burned out. He wasn't helping anyone. He was just ready to walk away, you know, and, and you know, the strength of all these people that you have. So tell, tell people who don't know who's who, some of these, some of the things that you were impressed with of, of speakers at the conference or, or something kind of clicked with you, or you think is, is going to resonate with men. Well, you know, I was thinking about that before we started recording and, and it's going to be very hard for me to pinpoint a few other than to say that I, wish every male on the planet could sit and watch this to me it's this is health on a platter you know you are getting the most incredible information from the heart from people who have been there who've done it who've had the light bulb moments and I think that was probably the most favorite question that I asked was um, and I'm not in it you won't see my face in the summit so <laughs> it's only uh, the guys of my editing skills is getting really good. Yeah, but you asked um, a lot of questions that, that were great. And so that was easier than me trying to come up with a talk. So I felt really comfortable and I really enjoyed doing it, you know, talking with you and you great at interviewing, obviously, and, you know, put people at ease. That's a huge thing. Yeah. So that was really, it was really good. It was um, some of the people decided to do their own presentation. So there are, are a few in there. So Prof Noakes, you know, oh, it, what can I say? I mean, he could talk for hours. I would just sit and be mesmerized and, and listen to him. He's incredible. Um, we had a doctor, Dr. Alex, Alex Petrashevsky, who's a, actually a GP in Sydney, uh, but he's passionate about cancer. So his, his talk is about, you know, what are the, what are his 10 best tips to preventing cancer um, for guys? You know, we've got Dr. Pran, who is a gastroenterologist uh, in, here in Sydney. And, uh, you know, he's got some pretty, pretty in, um, confident and heart-centered views on what people need to see. Um, obviously yourself, Philip Ovadia, the heart surgeon. See, you're the light bulb moments. What, what were your light bulb moments? So I wanted to know how you went from seeing health as this to what you now see it now. Because with human beings, we tend not to change till we get confronted with a real push in the back to do it. And of course, once we've done that, we're like, Hey, you know, you don't need to go through what I'm going through. Listen to this, but still, I think there, there has to be some sort of driver um, and impetus to get that. So that's why when we hear people's stories, people can sit there for a moment and go, Hey, that sounds like me. I so resonate with that. And, you know, you said, Brian, you know, I've been, I've struggled with my weight my whole life, my entire life. Well, how many people are that's going to resonate with? So what did you see from that and how did you, you know, what did you learn and what did you put into practice and what were the barriers? What were the things that you found really difficult that you can share with others so that they can sort of get through it quicker than maybe what you did? Um, and then, yeah, I think that's yeah. so important is be able to sit back and, and reflect and say what really matters, you know, all, all those things that we're talking about and on all these lists of people I've seen. And the amazing thing is so many of these guys I've sat down and just had a conversation about whatever life, what matters. And, you know, Eli Giroux, I see him there. He's, he's a real good guy who's really changed his life from being a hospitalist working crazy. And I remember at the beginning of COVID, he took so much heat because he said, here's what I'm seeing. Here's what I'm seeing getting sick in the hospital. And they said, well, you're shaming people. He's like, this is what I'm seeing. I want to help people. And you know, just, I had to come to his, I didn't know who he was. I came to, I go, look, this guy's being honest and telling you what he's seeing. And, and so he's, he's done some great things too. And he's helping a lot of people. I see him very active on Twitter now and doing good things. Yep. 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 And he's and David Wolf. Was great. Fantastic. Yep. 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 Addiction. David. Yep. That's right. Because it's a, you know, you know, the reality of the modern world is that, you know, if you, if, if corporations don't get you addicted to their products, they're not going to make money. And the guy in marketing is going to get fired or well, the, the people in marketing are going to get fired. They have to be addictive and they, you know, you and I know, and probably many of your listeners know how much billions of dollars get spent on that. Um, so 
the modern world's not going to change. You know, we're not going to go back, you know, we're not going to go back to tribal. Well, maybe we will at some point, but it won't be my lifetime and, you know, your lifetime. We have to learn the tricks and we have to, you know, not get hooked by it. Um, and I think, you know, all that sort of stuff is so important to understand and we can absolutely overcome a lot of that. And a part of that comes when we hear how the people have done it. You know, when we put aside the way we think it should be or the way what we know and just show up, you know, that'd be one thing I'd say, you know, I, I'd love you all to sign up. You can you can watch it for free for a limited time or if you, you know, 49 US, 49 Australian, which is probably like two cents in the US dollar, it's not much, to to have access to these talks. And watch them with nothing on your mind. Just come and show up and watch them and you will be amazed at the insights you'll get from, you know, what these guys share. I mean, Eric Westman, oh, my goodness, what a what a thrill to be able to sit and talk to him, one of the pioneers in this space. And, uh, you know, just great people, as you say, that just want to help people and just want to share. Their knowledge isn't behind a brick wall. You know, they've come along to this, they've said yes, and they've openly shared what they know. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, and they're a wealth of information and experience. You know, Bronson Dant, I got to spend some time with him in Utah. You know, we were at a conference together and got to know him. Like, what are you doing talking to us? And, you know, his story is amazing and what he's done to transform his life. You know, I looked at him and thought, this is a guy who's been fit his whole life, never had trouble. And then you start realizing, you know, we go through those moments Yes. And isn't that interesting? Because the same with Dr. Anthony Chafee, you know, like he's a in Perth, American in Perth. Um, you know, most, a lot of people will know who he is now. But, you know, like you, you, people, you watch, watch your judgments because he, I see comments all the time or you've never had to struggle or you've never, you know, you're on gear, you're doing this, you're doing that. Well, actually just set aside all your judgments and understand everyone's got a story and nobody nobody gets to where they are without going through the hard times and having the struggles. And, you know, I just think it is human nature that we want to jump in and judge, but it really limits what we learn when we do that. And uh, yeah, Bronson, Fanta, he reached out to me actually to be on my podcast, but I'm not doing the podcast anymore because I'm doing the summits. And, um, but it was around the time I was organizing it and I'd never connected with him. I'd never even heard of him. And I just said to him, Hey, look, I'm not doing the podcast anymore, but would you be interested in being a part of this? He's, oh yeah, absolutely. So yeah, he put something together for me and, uh, well, for all of you, not for me. Um, and it's amazing. It's amazing. How about Peter Bruckner? Oh, P Peter is my, he lives just about 20 minutes from me. Um, I love Peter Bruckner. Can I tell you how I got in con contact with Peter years ago? Um, and it was actually through my ex-husband. This is how, this is what people can do for people. So my ex-husband's a sports medicine doctor, but he's not in the low carb space. And I had just started my first little podcast. It was actually called the Nourished Mum Life at first. You know, this was five years ago and I had no idea what I was doing. I'd got onto YouTube and just said, how do you start a podcast? I'm like, right. I learned from YouTube. YouTube is amazing to learn from, by the way. And I thought, you know, like I'd interviewed a couple of people that I'd started to connect with. And I really need someone that's got a little bit of, you know, a following. So I said to my ex-husband, I said, hey, you know, I'm doing this podcast. He knew where I was heading and what I was doing. And I said, is there any chance you could say something to Peter and see if he might be? Yep, no problem. So he connected me with Peter Bruckner and uh, he came on my podcast and, you know, I mean, his story's phenomenal as well. And for someone like him, he's had the experience of working with Liverpool, the Australian cricket team and all the incredible work he's done in his life. And he is the most generous and kind and you know, giving and humble human being, you know, one of the ones there's many now, but you know, he was, he's just awesome. And he will do anything. Anytime I want to ask, I ask him for something, not a problem. Yeah, absolutely. Tracy, no problem. Lovely, lovely guy. Yeah. I got to be on a conference with him. You know, just such an honor, you know, just to answer questions like, uh Oh, am I answering it right guys? Look at this, you know, professor Noakes, one of the nicest people on earth also, you know, yeah. the, 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 determination and the strength where they they're not looking for a fight but they're not going to back down from it don't back these guys into a corner because they'll smile at you and then they'll they'll let you know how it really is in life you know that's what i love you know that that quiet strength yes 
Yes. You know, that quiet strength, I call it, um, you know, a quiet courage. And that's something that we all have to tap into to get on with life and do it the way we want to do it and be confident in what we believe, but also be open. See, we have to open ourselves to, to new beliefs. I mean, look at what Prof. And so from Peter heard about Prof having obviously his epiphany that, oh, hey, it's not all about the carbs. And he's like, well, I really respect and know this guy's really smart. So I have to do, there's something I've got to hear in this. So I have to put aside my own beliefs for a moment and just allow myself to see if there's anything in here worth looking at. Uh, And, you know, it takes a huge amount of courage and strength to do that. But so Peter, if I could just put a little plug in for here, for what he's doing here in Australia with Defeat Diabetes Australia. So he retired. I mean, he's 70. Yet, you know, he said to me, Tracy, I could uh, I could buy a sports car, you know, if I really wanted to. But he goes, no, I want to put my money into something that I, as a legacy, and that I really know is going to help people. Um, and you know how much he's copped and, and the, you know, what he has to go through and has gone through to get credibility to put this platform out there. So it's an online platform. People can join it from anywhere um, and just get the support and the help and the information, you know, like a Verta Health, I guess, in terms mm-hmm. of reversing diabetes or preventing it. And, you know, I know he's put personally so much of his own money into doing this and I will help and respect and show up and support anything that that he does, you know, um, that's pretty, it's pretty cool. And another face I see over here, Vic Basmagian. Yes. He's been a huge, I was a- actually really happy to see him there. He's, he, he's been a huge support of our, both of my podcasts and, yeah. you know, he's followed us from the beginning and he's had some great life uh, experiences and just a really, really good person. Yeah. Well, you know, I have to put in a plug for my beautiful friend Tia Reed here, who I know will be the first to listen to this podcast when it comes out. Yeah. She's um, awesome. And- she's been a great support and she connected <laughs> us actually. So that, that was really did. nice. And he's a very nice <laughs> she- person. She's she's sunshine in human form. So Tia and I connected through the Nutrition Network, through the coach certification program that I was so, oh my God, so thrilled to be involved in. Huge amount of uh, imposter syndrome being uh, asked to sort of be involved and put something like that together. But I I stepped over all of that and, and did all that and got to connect with Tia and many other people. But Tia and I have been sisters in another life. I know that. And I just had to say to her, look, I'm thinking of doing this. And she goes, I'm going to reach out to these people that I know. So on her end, she's in the US here in Australia. And, you know, she did that. And, uh, you know, that's how I think it's become. It was a combined effort for it to become as, as pretty amazing as it is. And, yeah, you know, connections are just everything. They're just everything in life. It's just, you know, like what a joy if I'd never you know I don't know I just don't don't second guess yourself just go for it just give it a go you know she said I she was nervous reaching out to you and to other people and asking you but you know the potential benefit just outweighs it step beyond it and do it yeah what are they going to say no you you even got the big guy one of my heroes Ben Bickman (laughs) yeah he's a busy guy and he's crazy and you know running around doing stuff saving the world he is, he is, but he's not too. So he's like you, Brian. I said to Tia after I'd finished our chat, and I was like, oh, thank you so much. What an awesome guy. You know, your energy and, you know, you're like Ben. You're in terms of, I've talked to Ben a don't, couple of don't times tell on ben my that. podcast he's, before. Get it. Don't, don't attack <laughs> Ben that way. This, so. <laughs> um, just, you know, like you, Ben, all of these guys, you know, they're just, you've got nothing to prove. You know, and if you can help people and you've got the time to do it and you will, and, you know, yeah, Ben, Ben's chat was like all of your chats. It was just really, really amazing. And we went to depths and I asked questions that I know that he hasn't been asked before. Um, And, you know, you'll answer, you'll answer honestly. And um, as I said, it's just, it's a gift that they've, that they've shown up and just shared what they've shared. So please sign up get on it (laughs) yeah (laughs) guys look i mean there's so much wisdom the wisdom of just looking at these guys i mean it's just amazing i mean i'm I'm excited for you to get all these i'm excited to watch these talks really i I hope you're gonna let me see those of course other guys so the present you guys get it but i have to i've still got a lot of work to do (laughs) today it's two cents in the united states that's that's good yeah for sure 
Mm. But no, but, um, no matter what I, I'm saying, honestly, but no matter what the cost, because these guys, I'll tell you, Ben Bickman is one of my heroes in life. And the reason I'm so indebted to him is I had a, a one of these life moments. I'm at, in uh, Denver and we're at a conference together. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's Ben Bickman at the gym, me and him, no one else. I was like, oh my gosh, am I going to talk to him? I was, I didn't know him. So we started talking, got into a conversation. He's such a nice, kind, de decent person. And, you know, I say, hey, Ben, look, if, and at that time I'm working 18 hour days, stressed out all the time, not sleeping, you know, never taking a day off, just working all weekend, everything. And I go, Ben, look, if I want to live a long life, what do I got to do? And he goes, oh, Brian, that's easy. Five things. He goes, number one, right? Don't work yourself to death and be stressed out. I was like, oh, there's only five. Yeah. Number two, get enough sleep. I was like, I don't like your rules, Ben. These are not very good for me. And he goes, that's why doctors <laughs> die before everyone else. But that was a take-home message, right? And then, you know, exercise regularly, eat real food, don't smoke or drink to excess. You know, all these things are, are so simple, five things, like that's what you have control over. So, you know, these these things that that people are so free at, at offering up and so many guys, maybe you listen, listen and say, well, I'm good at one of them, but not this one, but I need to work on this one, you know? And so we can kind of, realize what matters you know and so many people are broken because of that because they just don't really they're going through the motions that like i i was on a treadmill going too fast i knew i could do it for now but i couldn't do it for 25 more years you know it just wasn't going to work for me or my family so you start realizing okay is the money the important thing or is it did i go into med and i really had to question myself and say is it the money what really matters prestige or like power or having a nicer car than the guy next door does it any of that stuff really matter when it, when you break it down because like you said when you're dying of cancer and you're you're on your deathbed you don't say well i had the nicest car 20 years ago and no one even likes that car anymore <laughs> you know that's so true it's so true and if you don't ask the questions of yourself you won't ever get insight as to whether there's another way you know that's the that's the courage that's the first step you know just slowing down enough to see is this really the direction I want to go in and you know yeah if just asking that question of yourself so you we just don't do it you know and all of a sudden we wake up and we're 70 we're like oh yeah now I thought I was going to retire um but mm, now I'm sick I'm on medication I'm a sleep apnea machine I've got this that and the other I can't travel and you know yeah intervene Sorry, before that's... it's a problem don't wait till yeah. it's a problem then want to fix it you know no, no, you can do that at any time. And, you know, just that connection of an understanding, you know, a, a massive, massive, massive part, I think is seeing that, yeah, all that stuff out there is cool. Yeah, of course we want the nice house and the car. And, you know, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I think that we, we do, we, we enjoy that stuff, but that stuff, that's not the true stuff. You know, you can have this in here and be connected with this in here and know that none of that actually brings you prestige or it, it doesn't it doesn't bring you what you think it brings you it just feeds the ego a little bit but really it's about this and the connection with within here and then all of that stuff is just fun and that way if you do lose it like my husband did you're still okay and you know you're okay and you'll just get back up and like that mate of yours you'll just get back up and you'll start again mm -hmm. up from the ashes right like yeah, you had to the do phoenix Woo. surviving from <laughs> Being locked down with five kids and a husband, oof, you're tough. <laughs> I don't you're know tough. how I did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there was a joke. You know, the guy, they were asking this guy, they go, okay, there's two things you could do during the lockdown. A, you could lock down with your wife and kids for like the next six months. B, and the guy said, B. <laughs> and he's like, you, you don't even know what B is. I'm taking B. I'm going to take my chances. I'm not doing A. But, you know, B, I mean, we make jokes about it, but that that's a hard, that was a hard thing for a lot of people. And a lot of people mm -hmm. were drinking and, you know, domestic yep. abuse and you know there was it was a horrible oh. horrible thing for a lot of people who weren't yeah. solid in what they believed or or you know being able to reach out and have community you know it, we, we're seeing the devastation of those things so that's why it's so great you're building community with men that w we really need to step up and really uh help each other up and you know help each other because guys are so we're so um you know for us to get counseling or for us to get help from another guy it's really tough because we want to do it all on our own and say i got this i figured it out you know but to have all these little, you know, because as you know, doing a podcast, I get a little nugget from Dr. Dr. Unwin, a little nugget from this person, you know, Gary Fetke, whoever it is, you know, Tony Hampton, all these people I look at, I've, I've taken something and they've made my life better, you know? And so 
for other guys who maybe this is new to them, you know, this, this is such a great thing. Or if you have friends or family or, you know, your boss will be nicer if they're taking care of themselves or your, your coworkers. So how do guys find you? How do they get to the summit? So, well, hopefully you will um, be able to put in the low carb lifestyle hub um, website, which is just lowcarblifestylehub.com. If you go there, I mean, that has a direct link to the summits, uh, all the summits. So we've done a low carb for beginners as well. We've done obviously the women's health ones um, and now the men's one, uh, but also on there, you know, you've access to just FAQs, lots of information. If you've got questions, you know, how do I start? What is it? What's insulin resistance? What does metabolic health mean? What happens here? You know, all these sort of common questions people will have. All that's there. There's a blog. Plus, I have um, connected global coaches. So there's coaches. There's um, you know some dietitians and you know just people that you know from around the world really that you know you can reach out to. And the thing with I think the best thing about um, if you could say there was any best thing about lockdown, well, we got to really see that connection can happen wherever you are, and most people now will work virtually. Um, so if you find someone and list, you know, in the summit that you really resonate with, you know, reach out to them and connect to them. And I, I guarantee you, they'll help you or they'll be able to direct you to what you need um, to get to the help that you need. Uh, so that's, you know, the hub, but obviously, um, you know, if you are interested in and resonate with any of the stuff I do, this is my, I'm the I'm the, you know, I suppose I've got a global reach too with the work I do in terms of healing. I'm called the health and healing coach um, on Instagram and uh, we've got my book and my programs as well. So, you know, my website, Tracy McBeath, not Macbeth, not Macbath, but Macbeath. <laughs> dot com dot au so that's an Aussie one um you're welcome to go on there and same I have heaps of information on there for free just to just if you're curious and be curious you know stay curious uh, don't ever think you know because the minute you do you'll close yourself off to learning more and and just hop on and explore and if something grabs you great yeah and I think you know guys you have an opportunity of either sitting there and watching reruns of a Netflix show you've already seen or you can learn from all the great experts around and change your life. You know, that that's the challenge I would say is like, if we can waste a lot of time, I'm good at wasting time on Twitter. Uh, don't tell my wife, she catches me on Twitter sometimes, but she's my filter too. So she makes sure I don't get myself into too much trouble. But, you know, I really saying, hey, Lord, how do I want to invest? How do I want, what matters to me? And so, you know, learning from these people who've been through a lot, I know these their stories and it's pretty remarkable. So Tracy, thank you so much. And I can't let you off the hook. What's life's best medicine for you? Like when you when you go through the hard times like we did in the lockdowns and, you know, wh where do you lean on? Where, where do you get your strength? What do you lean on? What gives you purpose? Oh, what, a, what an amazing question. I think... Um... Life's best medicine for me is to slow down and to get quiet. I think, you know, I've seen that what I used to do and what a lot of people do, and it's all innocent, is that when we feel lost, we speed up. We, 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 we want to go harder. We want to run faster. And I've actually seen there's very little answer in that, as a, you know, and it just makes things look harder. And we don't get access to clarity. So for me, life's best medicine is just to slow down and just to let everything you know, like a snow globe, just put it down, just let everything sort of settle down and slow. You'll be okay. And in fact, in that space, I guarantee you, you'll see where your next step will be and, and what you need to do. And then all you need to do is have the courage to follow it. Awesome. Awesome advice. Thank you, Tracy. It's so great having you. And I'm excited about the conference and, um, you know, everyone be kind to yourself, be kind to others, you know, take a breath sometimes, you know, we, we, none of us get out of this thing alive. So enjoy the moment sometimes and be able to put that pen down or say, Hey, let's just go get away for the weekend, whatever it is. I think we miss out on those things. And so reconnect, connect with people around you and, and go to the conference and learn a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Thank you so, so much for having me. It's been such a thrill. I've loved every second. Thank you. No, I'm glad to, I'm glad to have you on. And, and I'm glad that, you know, really we're doing this to reach people. So we all have different tax and different ideas and different mannerisms and some people like Tro's style and some people like my style and so I think we all throw our our you know just being real and saying okay here's how we say it you know and here's what we do and 
hopefully we can help some people. And and if we can get guys to a conference, that's that's a miracle in itself. So yeah, actually, I, that's right. Don't fear the sign up. It's just literally your name and your email address. That's it. You know, yeah, don't we're all we've barrier. all become skeptics. <laughs> we all become skeptics, but man, if you, you can watch it for free, and then I think a lot of people just end up having it, so you can re you know go back and look at it again and. and you know, pick up the wisdom. And, you know, sometimes I'll go back and listen to an old pod podcast with Prof Noakes or, you know, it's just a miracle that we get to talk to these people, you know, and spend time with them and get the lifetime of wisdom that they have. So. Yeah. It's the best job in the world. <laughs> mm. I know we're spoiled. Thanks so much for yeah. joining me and uh, uh, have a good, thank you for spending your Saturday morning with me and my Friday afternoon. So. what a, That's awesome. Loved it. Thank you. Awesome stuff. Thank you for listening to this episode. We greatly appreciate your support. We would greatly appreciate a positive thumbs up on all of the platforms like uh, iTunes and uh, Spotify or wherever you're listening. And we just thank you for our Patreon supporters. Uh, we greatly appreciate yeah, your help in getting this message out. We think there's a lot of important information. And uh, hopefully this helps you. You know, Have a great day and thank you for listening and thank you for your support.